isa sa pinaka favorite ko na preaching this year yung faith in the impossible the first installment of the faith led life series particularly the, the part where god didn't change abram's name because of who he was but god changed his name because of god who he who would become and god changed his name from abram to to abraham from sarai to sarah god changed his name to Abraham to represent what would be done through him because of God's promises. That preaching has greatly impacted my life because when there are times I am reminded of my sins in the past, I always counter that with what Pastor JP said that particular Sunday. God looks at you and sees who you will become through faith. Kagaya ni Abraham, I know tinitignan din ako ng Panginoon according sa potential ko. Kung sino ako magiging, and to say the Lord that is so good is an understatement because it is very comforting to know that the way He looks at us. Hindi tinitignan ng Panginoon yung past natin. Hindi niya tayo kilala doon sa mga kasalanan na ginawa natin dati. Hindi niya naaalala yung mga pangit na ginawa natin. And most especially, hindi niya binabalik-balikan pa kung sino tayo before. He always sees and looks at our potential kasi nga nakita na tayo ni Lord. Sino tayo sa future? Hindi ni siya concerned dun sa past natin, regardless of the extent of our sins. Kasi ganun yung grace ni Lord, it is very impossible to comprehend. Yung grace ni Lord sapat. Alam ni Lord, nangihina ka, hindi mo maiyang at yung mo. But come on, nakikita ni Lord yung puso mo. Gusto mo ba rin mag-obey? And even yung katiting na faith na yon natutuwa si Lord. Isa sa mga preachings na tumatak sa akin this year is yung loving by giving. Our dependence is not on ourselves or our ability to produce, but our dependence is upon our God. I've learned that when we give, we grow on our dependence for God. Nasa pandemic tayo, alam nating mahirap ang buhay. Lockdown, walang trabaho, but this thing didn't stop us from giving to God. Our tithes and love offering continues pa rin. I even encouraged a sister in Christ to give her tithes since malakas ang kita ng tindahan niya. Even my first fruit, the Lord asked me to give it kahit September na since matagal nang nakatago yun nung February pa. And at my amazement, ibinalik yun ni Lord, gumamit siya ng ibang tao to give it back to me. Alam natin na gusto ni Lord na magbigay tayo para ipakita niya sa atin na nais niya tayong pagpalain muli. Give and it shall be given to you. And what's great about it is Umaapaw pa nga ang blessings ni Lord. Praise God for this revelation. All of these great things that God is doing in the church ay naging posible po through your giving. Every preaching is our favorite, but one that struck us the most is the Faith-Led Life series. Not particular in one, pero all of it from the very start. We all know that God speaks to us in different ways, but for me particularly, He reminds me of His goodness on how faithful He is. I still remember from the time na naglalakad ako papuntang skwela, wala kang pamasahe, and ang ginagawa ko lang as I walk is to say, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Sometimes it's hard to believe, pero when things are uncertain, hindi mo alam, pero ano nga ba mangyayari sa future, di ba? Minsan, pinapaniwala ko yung sarili ko that yes, there's a plan for me. And just like kay Abraham, the Lord let him decide, He let him make a mistake, and even may encounter yung mga hardship. And yet, the Lord remains the same. Tinatawag po tayo ng Panginoon para magtiwala, para sumunod, para manalig po sa Kanya. Me and my husband, from the very beginning, we always believe that God has its own timeline for us. Just like Abraham and Sarah before they had Isaac, lahat nakaplano na. Kung isipin mo nga naman, mahirap magantay. Minsan naisip mo, ibibigay pa ba ni Lord? Pero just like what Pastor JT said, God is a covenant-keeping God. A promise delayed does not necessarily mean that it will never come to pass. I always look back with the situation that I have experienced and grabe, compared with the one that I have now, Sabi ko sa sarili ko, totoo ang pangako ng Panginoon. Just be faithful at huwag kang titigil. God has its own investment for you. With this year of restoration, 
one thing that we know for sure is that God made us wealthier in the way that we trust Him. Yung magtiwala ka and not to think what will happen in the future, but enjoy what you have along the way and to know that God is with you. Throughout the scriptures, church, no, time and time again, He's telling us, God is inviting us, He is telling us to obey Him, to trust Him, to believe in Him, to follow Him. One of my favorite preaching, Pastor JP, this year is yung title na Return to God. Na sinabi ni Propeta Joel sa mga Israelita na magsisi kayo at manumbalik sa Diyos. Nakita ko ang sarili ko na tulad ng mga Israelita, matigas ang ulo, laging nagkakasala at umaalis sa plano ng Diyos. Kahit na marami ang miracles ng ginawa ang Diyos sa kanila, pilit pa rin silang gumagawa ng mga bagay ng ayaw ng Diyos. Tulad ko noon ay madalas ang plano ko at sariling desisyon na sinusunod na naging resulta ng mga kapalpakan at nawawala ang peace sa puso ko dahil sa mga maling desisyon sa buhay. It reminded me that sin is what drives me away from God and every time I'm doing my own way, hindi ko namamalayan na napapalayo na pala ako sa Kanya. But still, Through His love and grace, He's always giving me a chance to repent and return to Him. Natutunan ko na true repentance is simply turning away on my own ways and turning into God's way. Not just turning from sin, but committing and surrendering my plans, decision, and my whole life to my Lord and my Master, that is Jesus. True repentance is fully a surrendered life to God. Here I am, a lover and follower of Jesus. Nagkasala, nagsisi, nanumbalik sa Kanya. And now, serving God in His kingdom here at the Rock City Church. Hindi ko alam yung pas mo. Hindi ko alam ano yung ginugulo, ginagambala, nakaaway sa utak mo na dapat nandyan ka, nakastak ka lang, huwag ka nang mag-church, lumayo ka na lang, come on, di ka nila maiintindihan ano man yung pinagdaanan mo, sabi ng Panginoon, come on, bibigyan kita ng grace para makalabas dyan, come on, it isn't too late to return to me now. Ang title ng isa sa mga favorite kong preaching ay Make Your Life a Prayer by Pastor JP. Dati isang beses lang ako sa isang araw nagpe-pray, sandali lang, and bago pa matulog, so inaanto. But ngayon, narealize ko na kahit hindi sa alone time natin, ay pwede tayong magkaroon ng communication kay God. Sabi nga ni Pastor JP, Long-winded prayer is not the point, but continued and frequent communication with God is. Hindi lang to basta chine-check mo early morning, okay, tapos na ako dito. He wants more than appointment in your schedule. Come on. He wants to be included in every activity, in every conversation, in every problem, and in even, even every thought sa buhay mo. Throughout the day, nagkakapag-pray na po ako, kahit nag-uurong or naglalakad, nakakausap ko pa rin po si God. At dahil doon, mas nag-grow po yung relationship ko sa kanya. Kaya po nagpapasalamat ako kay Pastor JP at sa buong The Rocket Fam sa pagtulong sa akin mas mapalapit kay God. Hindi na tayo mag-focus doon every day na parang alam mo yon license natin yon na pag na-check mo na tapos ka na, tapos na yung spiritual aspect mo. No! If prayer is conversing with God, then gusto ni Lord non-stop makipag-usap ka sa kanya. Hello, The Rock Fam! So, isa sa naging favorite ko preaching series this year is yung Heart for the House. Noong time na to, sobrang dami ko talaga na-realize na before ako naging part ng The Rock, I was full of fear. Dahil nga on my part, I was not really ready to step in and be involved in the church. Um, Siyempre, nahiya pa po ang una, but sa tulong ng grace ng Panginoon, nagsimula akong subukan. Letting myself na mag-engage sa mga church services and fellowships. But along my journey, alam ko sa sarili ko na hindi pa talaga ako fully nakakapag-commit. Na dumating talaga ako sa point na nawala na akong gana mag-join 
especially if wala doon yung tao kakilala ko or kakurus ko. Then, until God reminded me through the preaching na, It is impossible to love me, but not love my church. It is impossible to love Jesus and not love His church. So, alam niyo yun, unexpected talaga tong message na to. Na talagang tinarget ni Lord yung puso ko. Na mapapakita ko palang mahal ko si Lord if I love His church. So, that statement made me realize what I need in the moment. Na nagising talaga ako rito na akala ko is pwedeng maging ganun yung mindset or commitment ko. But, hindi pala. So, sabi ni Lord sa akin, just to open my heart, huwag akong matakot dahil kasama ko siya. So, I did. I surrendered to God and opened my heart sa church and to His people. And, I know I'm planted here na hindi aksidente na naging part ako ng Tarak. And until now, I'm here to serve God and His Church. So, thank you so much po. Kung mahal po natin yung church, hindi natin nahahayaan na may mamagitan sa atin. Mahal mo eh. Hindi mo hahayaan yung mga liit na tampuhan, maliit na selosan, maligit na anumang bagay. Come on. If we really love Jesus, Naturally po, dapat mag-flow po yan sa mga puso natin na mamahalin mo rin yung mahal ni Jesus. I know that this year was really a tough year. Not just for me, but for everyone of us. We faced lots of challenges that tested our faith, our relationship with God, and even our love for Him. Last August, the breakthrough series remained remarkable in my life. I have learned that there may lots of opposition that may came along, but dapat pa rin natin ipagpatuloy, mag-press on, because God doesn't stop fighting for us. God is moving in our life, even if we don't see the any progress. I have realized that opposition comes before breakthrough. It means life's greatest difficulties will always happen before life's greatest breakthroughs. So I also understand that opposition is Satan's response to God's move. We may pray for a breakthrough, but hindi natin ito nakikita, but God is still moving for us. And lastly, we should not forget that opposition requires a pressing mindset. It means that no matter how hard it is, it should not give up and an I should remain still calm because God is with me all the time. Whenever I'm dealing with challenges, I always remember three things. Press on, keep on, and don't quit. Our breakthrough is coming, so we need to hold on and be still. By faith, I see miracle and my way and in your way. We should trust the timing and continue to seek God's kingdom and love for Him. For He will provide nothing is impossible through Him and let's claim it. Opposition comes before breakthrough. Meron munang opposing forces. Meron munang nagihinder. Hindi rin papayag yung kaaway. Yung kaaway, alam niyo po, palaban siya eh. Opposition is Satan's response to the move of God. Hallelujah. Come on. Opposition requires a pressing on mindset. 